Over the years here on Maker's Muse, I've taken a close look at various 3D printer Kickstarter campaigns with my Should You Back It series. Well, it's been a while since I've looked at anything on Kickstarter, so I thought it'd be fun to go back to those and also some other key notable 3D printing campaigns that have happened in the past and have a look to see where they are now. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So Kickstarter for many years has been a huge temptation for those looking to get into the 3D printing hobby because there's been these machines that have popped up on campaigns that have been so tempting, like the price was so low, so many of these features were, pr were promised. But the danger with Kickstarter, as I've mentioned many times, is it's basically a donation. You're donating to the company to give them funds to produce a product and there's no real guarantee you're going to get A, what you uh, what you hoped or B, in time for what they say or C, you might not even get the product at all and you'll never get your money back. So I'm going to go through some of the campaigns that I've looked at in the past here on Makers Muse and some other notable ones in the 3D printing realm and let's have a look at to see to see where they've ended up. So let's start with Trinus. So Trinus was is a machine by the Kadama team. They got in touch with me and sent me a pre-production unit to test out on Maker's Muse. So the Trinus when I tested out, it's a rigid bulletproof 3D printer, small build volume, but I was really quite impressed with its characteristics and I gave it a big thumbs up, which in my opinion, definitely helped to boost the campaign. So they ended up raising $1,600,000 and to my knowledge, they've shipped all units and they have a thriving community around this machine and they ended up making actually it have a full uh, enclosure as you can see here on their updated banner. But something that wasn't actually made uh, made uh, clear when I was given the Trinus pre-production machine to test out is uh, they were working with a company called Panawin in China and um, yeah, so Panawin already had a machine for sale on the Chinese market called the Panawan F1, which was basically the same thing. So yes, in Kadama, to, to Kadama's credit, they did change a lot of things, made it have a full enclosure and all of that, but they kind of used a machine that already existed and rebranded it to garner support on their campaign. That's not a bad thing though, because they did ship. So overall, this campaign was a success and uh, Kadama went on to make another campaign, which is the Obsidian, which has been hugely successful on Kickstarter, but has not yet shipped. So hopefully they will not disappoint and will fulfill rewards just as they did before. So overall, it's a company that does have a good track record. So I'm pretty confident they will, but this time it's a complete custom machine. In this case, it was a machine that already did exist that they based their uh, Trinus on, but the Obsidian is completely new. So we'll see how they go, but best wishes to them. The next machine we have is the 101 Hero, which was the branded the cheapest 3D printer on Kickstarter, the world's most affordable 3D printer. And I did a video on this and I backed it as a bit of a joke. It, uh, I honestly didn't think this machine would ever ship. It was a small team in Shenzhen, China, and the machine was showing various, very low cost parts, but it did have, they did have a functional prototype that seemed to work quite well in their video. Well, to my surprise, not too much later than the promised delivery date, they did actually send out units and I did get my 101 Hero. Was it any good? Well, no, it was actually pretty terrible. That's what I expected though. At a price point they were aiming at, to make a product from scratch, they actually did an admirable job. But the components, the motion components, the extruder design was overall just too low cost to produce high quality prints. The machine moved very slowly and it just wasn't a very good 3D printer. Interestingly though, if you want to get a 101 Hero, you can now pick them up. They're all over AliExpress. If I just go here, you can see an example here. It's called the 3D Desktop Delta Printer Mini Cosell Toy for Kids, Students, Beginners, Education. Wow, that sounds like a, uh, that sounds like a keyword soup for YouTube. Anyway, um, the price I paid was around $70 US, uh, which was ridiculous. Now it's 139, I would not pay that much for this machine. It's really not that good. Honestly, if you're trying to get into 3D printing, save up a bit more money. This is way too low cost and you're just going to suffer. This is the Anvil 3D printer. Another project I analyzed a few years ago under my Should You Back It uh, series. And 
I had a few major complaints about this machine, mostly because like there was no way to see into the printing chamber, which is critical for FDM 3D printers. But there was a few things that I just wasn't convinced on. It just looked too rough and not ready for production. Well, in the end, it wasn't. Unfortunately, the team did get hit with some major hurdles. When it comes to bringing a machine from a prototype stage to uh, full production, that's when things can really get expensive and things go horribly wrong. In the, in the case of the Anvil team, it was injection molding. They had poor quality molds, whether or not they went to too cheap a manufacturer for the molds, or they didn't really know how to do mold design, I don't know. But in the end, they ran out of money. And they did try, to their credit, to start refunds, as you can see here in update 27, which was in April 11th of 2017. They were gonna to start to try doing refunds, but if you go into the comments page, uh, there is a lot of backers dating back to October last year asking, where is my refund? Again, guys, Kickstarter campaigns are not a guarantee to get a product. If you back them, they are basically a donation. There's very little protecting you. You can try to get a, a charge back with your credit card, but often these campaigns go for years or even, um, if, even like years and years beyond the delivery date estimate. So that's going to be beyond your charge back. Um, guidelines so you won't be able to get any money back through that way and uh, yeah so essentially all these people are saying they've got nothing next we have the mini toy I had a lot of fun analyzing this Kickstarter campaign when it was live and uh, I said it was basically terrible for kids uh, they're trying to make it look fun and playful and basically you couldn't see the nozzle when it was doing the first layer because it was too high up in the top of the chamber and the design they had did not have a lockable door there was no obvious bed leveling assistance. It was basically designed to look fun, but it was just a really bad, really basic FDM 3D printer designed by the company WiseTech Co, who have made 3D printers before. So this is an established company making a 3D printer. So you would have thought it would have come across pretty well and, and deliver. Well, they actually do have a lot of interesting updates showing their progress on the mass production line. PCBs ready to assemble. That looks like stepper controllers. Uh, separate drivers and all the uh, injection molded parts being assembled there. But if you go into the comments, it seems that while they did ship these units, the company's just gone, gone AWOL. So they're no longer in contact and the machines appear to be very low quality. Now I cannot find anything. I cannot find any reviews or anything about this 3D printer and how well it, well it works. I did find, however, in CES 2016, they did have a stand here, posted by Paul79. So you can see here, they did have a stand at CES in Las Vegas with their fun and unique gift desktop 3D printer. Uh, but yeah, um, this is a case of a machine that did ship, I assume to most people, but unfortunately it was just not good enough quality. And judging by all these comments, uh, they're saying you should report the campaign and um, a lot of people with non-functioning 3D printers. Next in our lineup, we have the Cetus from Cetus 3D, uh, which is actually owned by Tier Time, who make the Up Mini 2, which is one of my favorite small form factor printers, and the Up Box 3D printers. So from the get-go, I knew that this 3D printing company was experienced in making machines for many years, had a very large production line they could they could uh, employ to make these machines, and had very good swing in getting low cost parts in bulk uh, volumes. So to start with, they actually sent me a pre-production unit, which I did enjoy using. It had a few quirks that I wasn't convinced with, but even the most experienced companies can run into issues. So the Cetus was well funded, $169,000, but I mean, that's very low. Remember, there's there's been Kickstarter campaigns with $1 million plus dollars. So this is a very unsexy 3D printing campaign. The, the video they had was not very good, but the machine was very, very decent. However, they did have, have some teething issues when it came to shipping, namely the actual gantry would drop down suddenly, whereas my unit I was sent for pre-production testing would drop down slowly because they're using a, a belt for the Z-axis. So a lot of people did get burnt with the first generation of Cetus 3D printers. And that's also another theme you'll notice with these campaigns. You're getting the first generation machine and it will have quirks, bugs and features that may change in future. So the Cetus version two came out not too long after this machine and fixes all those issues. It's a very good printer, but if you're jumping in at the, at the ground level at a Kickstarter campaign, keep that in mind. You are 
on the bleeding edge of that product and it goes for pretty much everything on Kickstarter. If these companies, even if they have experience uh, making a machine for the first time or a product for the first time, it will probably have some quirks, a few things that need tweaking, but you're getting first generation. So you get the, the, uh, the luxury of having it first, but you may have issues that get fixed later on down the line. It's just part of the game. Next, we have the Pio Poly Moai, which actually got sent to me in pre-production state by Mark of Pio Poly. And this is a actual SLA 3D printer, resin 3D printer. And it's interesting because this is this came out at the same time as many other campaigns, but it actually was quite successful, more successful than the, than the, the Cetus. He raised $254,000. And if you go to the comments, you'll notice nothing but praise for the Moai. It was a kit even. And you know, most latest from October, finally got my Moai up and running, had a hardware failure from a little bit of damage. Then he got it up and running, getting beautiful prints. So this is an example of a creator of a very technical product who spent the time in pre-production and prototyping stage to get things right and make the industrial ties before hitting Kickstarter. The shipping, the, the, the time between the campaign and the delivery was very quick because everything was put in place before the campaign. I, I talked to I talked to Mark quite often, and yeah, he spent a lot of time getting things right before even launching. And that seems to be another another sort of trap these creators fall into. Spend all their time and effort and money getting the earliest prototype they can that looks kind of okay, get a awesome video going, and make a campaign to raise money when they have no idea what the actual manufacturing costs are going to be, what the actual shipping issues are going to be, what certification problems they might run into and all these things that come up later down the line to trip up these creators. If you get it all up and running up front, all in place, it might take you an entire year, but you're gonna end up with a very happy ecosystem of customers that will end up buying your next iteration of machines down the line, no issue. And it's interesting because the Moai wasn't a cheap 3D printer. I think that's kind of why it was so successful. There was overhead for issues down the line and um, enough sort of cash in the bank, I suppose, to get those contracts. So I mean, you know, the early bird was 800 US and then it went up to a thousand and then um, and then sort of stopped there. So a thousand for an SLA is still very cheap, but it's not like he was trying to target like extremely low cost 3D printers, like a hundred dollars, like the Obsidian was trying to do. Because then you need a humongous volume of backers to make the project successful to get those low cost orders. Alrighty, so we've seen some successes, we've seen some less than successes, but machines that have shipped. Now let's look at the absolute disaster 3D printing Kickstarters. These are the ones that make the record books and will go down in history as the most stupid, ridiculous waste of money ever, um, in my opinion. Okay, Peachy Printer. This one's a classic. This was a very, very old project. Um, one of the first low-end 3D printed 3D printers that were promised on Kickstarter and also a 3D scanner too. It was a really innovative budget uh, SLA system with resin. But if you're in the 3D printing community, you'll know that the Peachy printer never shipped and the money got spent on building a house. The whole story is ridiculous that it actually went as far as it did. And there's actually a whole video from the creator trying to well, explaining what happened. It's freaking insane. But again, going back to it, your, your pledges on Kickstarter are basically donations. So all the Peachy Printer pledges donated to some guy's house and we're never going to see the Peachy Printer in production. And it's just kind of hilarious in a very ridiculous sort of way. And we're going to finish up with my personal favorite, the Pirate 3D Buccaneer. This was one of the first viral 3D printer sensations on Kickstarter because it was promised to be so cheap for the time. It was sexy. It had a fantastic uh, fantastic project video and it had this whole sort of allure that just lured in $1,400,000 worth of backers. The Pirate 3D Buccaneer um, unfortunately hit many rocks early on and what was really interesting with this campaign is I actually have one and I actually did a live stream trying to get it to, to work. So the story of how I got it is Dion who runs the 3D printer here in Australia. He's a supplier of 3D printers and, and, and filament and parts. He had this machine sent to him by Pirate 3D to test out if he'd, he'd like to actually retail and sell them. The strange thing is though, Pirate 3D Buccaneer, um, 
they only sent maybe 40% or so of the machines to backers. So what they were doing is they saw they were running out of money. They decided to just cut off more than half of their backers, so more than more than $700,000 worth of backers, and start targeting suppliers. And you could actually, for a very long time, buy a Buccaneer 3D printer from their website, but you couldn't get it if you backed them on Kickstarter. They just literally said, get stuff to most of their, most of their um, backers. And this is a campaign that happened years and years and years ago. So if we go into the comments section, even only three days ago, people are trying to get their money back. I invoke my rights under Kickstarter terms of use. I invoke my rights under Kickstarter terms of use. So what are the next steps? Blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry, guys, you're never getting that money back. It's more than likely completely spent by now. And the company in my, if I go to their website here, by the way, they made a new version. So not only did the backers not get the original, they actually went on to make another version called the Buccaneer Plus. But if you go to get yours today, you'll notice that it takes you to a page with um, with no products, only adhesive print platforms and filament. There is no printer. So by the looks of it, Pirate 3D is no longer. They seem to be completely dead. Finally, in 2018, you cannot buy a printer. And if you back them on Kickstarter and don't have a machine, you're pretty much done. Um, at one stage, you see you could buy it on Amazon for about a thousand bucks, which is pretty crazy. It's very, very expensive for such a small machine, to be honest. And um, it's just a classic Kickstarter disaster story. It was just so tempting for so many people. And it just absolutely failed. So what are the takeaways here? What have we seen from these campaigns that I looked at those years ago to where they are now? And what can we sort of learn for this year's next batch inevitably of crowdfunding 3D printed campaigns? Well, it seems to be that if a company exists and they've been around for a long time, then they're a pretty safe bet. But keep in mind, even if they've made 3D printers before, if it's a radical new design, they may still run into issues down the line. But if it's an established company, they're less likely to just ghost and disappear. It still can happen, but it's less likely. But the real important thing to remember, again, I iterate this so many times, is Kickstarter is little more than a donation to a company. It is not a pre-order under any any legality. Um, you can't take them down in court for not delivering because it, it's it's de defined very differently. Kickstarter is not a pre-ordering website, even though a lot of campaigns paint it to be that way to make it more attractive, there is serious risk involved in Kickstarter campaigns. However, it can pay off and you can get machines before anyone else in awesome technologies and it has been used in the past to, to fund brand new groundbreaking technologies. But again, you will probably get the bleeding edge first generation of those technologies that may have issues and then down the line, people will get probably better ones with, the le with less issues, maybe for even less cost. But you can be the first. That's the, that's the magic of Kickstarter campaigns. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found this video useful. I certainly had a lot of fun going through these old campaigns and seeing where they are now. And uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to look at this year's batch of 3D printing campaigns and throw in my thoughts to what they what what things might happen down the line and if they're likely to deliver or not. Again, it's always conjecture. Um, I'm not making any promises. It's always your risk and your money, but they're fun. It's a fun series to do, so I'm happy to get back into it. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to Make This Muse. It helps me out a huge amount. I love to empower your creativity with 3D printing. I hope you did get a 3D printer, not one of these ones that didn't deliver. And look forward to seeing you seeing you again very shortly here on Make His Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Well, I'm sorry, but um, I went and spent approximately $250,000 of our Kickstarter money on um, building my building my house. Um, no one else knew about it and it's something that I've done that I regret.